I swear I know how to do this stuff. So sorry about that, guys. A uh, little little miscue with pushing the button. But hey, welcome to Coffee and Darts. Uh, I'm your host, Matthew. Excited to be here tonight. Um, and of course, we have our first guest since I have returned. And it is the illustrious Jen Mounts, who recently had her birthday and actually got a little bit of a vacation to boot with that. So yes, harass her on the socials for taking some time off. But um, tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on with A to Z darts and USA darts. We'll get Will into the show at some point in time. He is busy tonight. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what's going on tonight with uh, USA darts as well. There's an event tonight. Apparently, one of the players broke his hand, but we'll cover that later. Um, and right now, let's go ahead and get Jen in, and we're just going to we're gonna talk about what's going on with darts. We're going to take a look at a product, and I do want to talk a little bit about what's going on in the world of female darts with the PDC, and just in general, where we see that going and where it's been. So welcome to the show, Jen. Hey, how are you? I'm doing amazing. I, I think I speak for many to say we're excited to see that you're back, and can't wait to kind of get more darts news, because they're there can never be enough darts personalities out there. So I'm glad to be here. Well, I appreciate that. And I'm glad that you're here. And I'm glad that we were able to stay connected. Um, it, it's been a while. It's actually been a couple of years <laughs> uh, since we've had you on the show. You've stayed in the darting world. You've stayed with A to Z. Um, so just kind of curious. Catch me up. What have you guys been up to? What's going on with A to Z and USA darts? Gee whiz. It's, uh, I think my seven year anniversary with A to Z is coming up. So that's in May and it sure doesn't feel like it. Um, we've had USA darts since 20, the end of 2020. So man, like over three full years of traveling and covering darts. And I think even from Will's perspective, it's been quite the progression all around. We're seeing such an increase buzz surrounding just the topic of darts and people enjoying playing it and watching. So it's been just this whirlwind of kind of shifting our objectives. And so for the longest time, I think A to Z has had this intention of really only reaching the in-depth like community of darts players who really know what they're doing and really know what's happening in this whole world. But at the end of the day, the majority of our customers are people that just play darts in their garage. So we've shifted gears quite a lot and announced the beginning of this year that we're going to put out 101 content, fun, informative content, form and mechanics, you know, really try to get a hold of people that don't really understand there are leagues and tournaments out there and subscriptions you can <laughs> subscribe to to watch darts. So we're trying to, to kind of wrangle in this influx of new players that came from the tail end of COVID. Um, and keep them here to stay. I think it's been really exciting. So we've done nothing but just heavy content marketing. I'm sure people will get <laughs> sick of my face at some point. So I'm hoping to hire more personalities to kind of join our team and just get so much more darts news out there. So that's really our goal right now. Well, I'll say, Jen, I'm enjoying the review videos that you guys are putting out. Um, I know that was something that even two, three years ago, something that was something you wanted to do. Uh, and it was a passion for you. And so I'm excited at what I'm seeing. You guys are putting out really good content. You're talking about darts um, in a different way, uh, very much showing what the capabilities are of the manufacturers now, you know, the, the incredible look of a barrel. And then of course, showing us how to play darts. So I, I do want to ask you, because there are people of course that are watching that know who you are, they know you as the boss lady um, that, you know, you know, of course, um, that particular part of your life. Um, but some people may not know and remember Whiny Wednesdays. Could you <laughs> take us back a few years now oh, boy. Um, to just talk a little bit about how you got into darts? I believe it was your was it your brother, your cousin, someone that you played darts with um, and just how you got into the sport um and a little bit maybe about whiny wednesdays and where that went and of course that particular couple that used to hang out with you they're now married um <laughs> but uh, maybe just take us back a little bit sure easy enough um for me darts started in 2013 i was a senior in college and my mom's bar which was just a, a dive bar on south Tacoma way uh in washington state it was just doing terribly um really really needed to get drum up some business so i started working there. I actually transferred from Bellingham, uh, Western Washington University to UW. 
and just tried to help out with the bar. And so I had played darts as a child, you know, just like anyone else, but I didn't understand like how the games worked or like that world at all. And my cousin and I, Jesse, um, both started working at the bar to try to help spruce it up and basically just get enough foot traffic in to sell the bar eventually. So we started off as two novice doubles partners and we played uh, soft tip darts. There was something called Medalist in the Pacific Northwest. Then they also had Darts Live come in and eventually your bull shooter G3 boards um, where everyone started going crazy for the tournament of champions. So it was just soft tip galore and it's an accident of birth, you know, whether you get introduced to soft tip or steel tip. So I always tell people that my preference is soft just because that's just you know, where my love for darts blossomed. And we played leagues three times a week and just became obsessed. You know, we stayed up all night playing Darts Life Global against people in France and Japan. <laughs> and uh, we just went crazy, you know, obsessed over it. Uh, started winning competitions and, you know, really just got into the world of tournament play. So for me, I just became a player and then got sponsored by A to Z got offered a job to move to California, work there. And I, before that point, I was just very active with like vlogging and making videos about the social side of darts, women's darts, um, which honestly feels like a, a lifetime ago. So long-winded answer to your question of whiny Wednesdays was more so kind of trying to tackle misconceptions about darts, what people kind of complain about and bust those myths and also try to introduce more provocative ideas about our sport. Nice, nice. I did want to um, show everybody just a, a quick image that I remember. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> there we go. This is this is Jen back in the day. This is what, probably eight, nine years old there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm now 12. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a gosh, like four or five years of just intense, like traveling and tournament play and taking it so seriously. Like I played darts for a living terribly, you know, didn't make a lot, but I actually did it. I had no job and I um, traveled to every tournament I could soft tip and steel tip during that time. Nice. Nice. I remember, you know, coming across as I was getting into darts um, years ago and coming across whiny Wednesdays. And it there wasn't a lot on YouTube about darts. And I yeah. enjoyed <laughs> watching your videos. I enjoyed you talking about the perspective of being a female in the sport at that time. Um, it has grown and changed. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the show um, as to what you've seen change from when you entered, which I know it, was, it wasn't the greatest experience at that point in time. But to where it is today, where we see the likes of Fallon and Bo and um, the others that are now coming up in the sport and, and changing and, and adjusting that uh, within the sport. And, and so we're going to talk a little bit more about that here later. What's up with USA Darts? So I know that you guys acquired it. There's growth. You guys last year, I want, I want to hear about this because this is something I watched a lot last year and was excited about and, and wished I had been doing this show so I could talk to you guys. But you guys got to travel. You got to go um, like really be a part of the the darting scene from that perspective of USA Darts. What was that like? What was it like going abroad and, and representing and, and being a part of all of that? Man, huge question. Um, for us, it was very life changing. I think huge on our bucket list, both Will and I. I mean, I'm sure I guess we didn't really go into depth, but I'm, I'm sure we both have always dreamed of going to Europe, particularly for darts and really just making connections with the PDC and also the media teams that cover darts worldwide, because no one thinks of a U.S. media person. Um, I believe we were the first American media team to cover a major PDC event. So that was the match play in Blackpool last July. Um, so it's kind of crazy to think of that. Like there's certainly been amazing American players that have gone overseas. A couple of ours live there now um, or, or routinely travel there all year long. But to think of the other side of it, the business side of it, of trying to connect with these manufacturers and darts who live in England or Wales or, you know, wh wherever their headquarters are and get an understanding of how the actual tournament world works overseas versus us, which is very different. So our goal through USA Darts very clearly is for American people to care about European major tournaments, to subscribe to PDC TV 
and to understand the relevance of this top-down marketing. And then on the flip side, our goal is to get the European market to have respect for Americans for soft tip darts and to understand that it's a very legitimate thing that is not going away. And we have to grow steel tip and soft tip separately, treat them as separate industries, but they need to be acknowledged, you know, acknowledged worldwide. And it's been incredible. I think we're doing, we're completing that objective simultaneously and just kind of trying to bring the world together to get people to understand that there are these hidden pockets of talent all around the world. And if, if we can gain enough interest, there can be Q schools popping up, you know, perhaps someday in the United States, and we can kind of bridge the gap there to create more opportunity for everyone. Nice. Um, I, again, I enjoyed what you, what you guys were doing and, and watching the interviews. Who was one of your favorite interviews? If you could go back and, and interview someone again when you were over in Europe, outside of Jules, who would be your favorite <laughs> favorite person to interview? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a much better question for Will. He's our, you know, um, our dedicated, designated interview guy. And I do the stage side photography so we can have stills for our marketing. Um, but I did join him for some of the Red Dragon and Winmore players. I think um, Gerwin Price was a big surprise for me of just like super goofy, incredibly nice and laid back off the Aki. And I think it's interesting to dissect his career and the lens of which people view him, which I think is very clearly separate when he's on the Aki versus off. You never hear stories of um, any like negative stories outside of the darts world and just him relaxing or being interviewed. So he was hilarious. Um, I love talking to him. Will and him kind of bonded over rugby. Um, so, you know, I think there was just a little bit of a unique kind of personality like behind the scenes for him. And I thought Johnny Clayton was just like one of the nicest guys out there. He might be my number one in terms of who the most laid back and just humble and kind of all the PDC players. It's tough, you know, you only have these small interactions with them. So it's difficult to judge a person, but let's say those, those are the standouts for me. So none of them like found you, uh, you know, outside a pub, beat you up and, and did all that stuff like <laughs> some players of the past might have? No, I, no, that was a big shock. I'll be honest. I fully came in with the understanding that I would be perhaps treated poorly as an American person um, for that trip to Europe. But I couldn't have been more wrong. I think people were honestly just shocked that we were there. They were stoked. So it was quite the opposite reaction of they're like, what are you doing over here? You know? <laughs> Um, so it was just a really, really cool experience. And even just the locals, they're like, holy smokes, you're from California. Like, what on earth are you doing here for darts? Um, so it was it was a beautiful experience. Well, that, that's cool. I mean, I'm excited to hear that. Of course, we as Americans and I know for myself interviewing a few international players, just the hype that some of them had to be on an American show, um, you know, the excitement that goes hand in hand with that. So. I am excited with where darts is headed. I'm excited where the CDC and partners is taking us and, and where USA darts is taking us in regards to reaching across the pond and actually that interaction between the, basically the two countries. I'm looking forward to kind of that America's cup type darts program somewhere down the future where we have developed enough players that we can actually have that kind of a, a, a tournament type thing. I think that'd be a lot of fun. That's actually sounds amazing. <laughs> so, um, one thing I did want to ask you about um, dart shoes. Sorry, I'm bringing dart shoes back up. Have you seen the triple 20 yeah. uh, dart shoes? Okay. I, I'm, I'm ordering a pair. I'm going to see if I can get these guys to sponsor the show. Cause I'm such a dart shoe fan, Yeah. Um, but I'm about to order a pair. What's your thought on that? Well, first of all, what is your size? I, I'm an 11. Okay. That's a bummer. I think I have a 10 and a half. Um, I, I'll make it work. You might, could, you could maybe squeeze into them. Um, I squeeze actually have it. a pair. I have a pair. Okay. So maybe we could donate it to you. And if it doesn't fit, you could raffle it off, but we have a pair right now. Um, yes. So we looked at them. We tried them. I think that, I mean, it's an incredibly niche product, so we couldn't bring it on from a distributor standpoint, um, not to disappoint everyone, but A to Z darts more than likely is not going to carry it as a wholesaler, but you can you can already commercially buy it, you know, in the United States. So um, 
I think that it's quite interesting. I'm surprised that such a hyper specific product was made for darts rather than just a particular shoe line that people were trying to push onto others. Yeah, it's a great photo. So you can see you don't get to choose just the right or left, you know, where it has that 45 degree angle or that front flat toe lip. You you have to get the full pair because of course they don't want to get into crazy skews of like all these different sizes of just one of each. Um, so I mean you I think based off the picture, people would assume that they're really heavy, but they're not. They're incredibly light, lightweight. So that was my biggest surprise. Um, I think they're decently comfortable and it's just tough because you only have those two options. You can't get like the line custom fitted to exactly how you want to stand. So not everyone stands exactly at a 45 degree angle. So it's, you know, it's out there for a niche group of people for sure. I think it's cool. Yeah, I think it's pretty neat. I mean, I've looked at them and I was curious about the weight. Is that like, I was wondering if that was like a hard rubber or if it was more of a softer type material, but I know there's, there's a lot of different materials now that shoes are made of. So that was my concern. Like, I don't remember if you remember those jump soles that used to help you to like, you know, slam oh, yeah. dunk. Yeah. I, I had a <laughs> pair of those and they were heavy and those, yeah. things, and I just <laughs> thought that these would be the same thing. Like these would be super heavy. So. Yeah, I can, I can uh, attest to the lightweight feature. The only thing I can't say for sure is durability. So I don't know if it wears holes in the, you know, at what point of the shoe or if it's going to be really long lasting, but I will say anyone out there that's intending to buy a pair, like just make sure you practice in them if you're going to play in them. So don't just pop them on for a tournament. That's going to really throw you off. So practice how you play, like wear the clothes and shoes that you perform in when you practice. Speaking of practice, I know that you guys are looking at um, producing some videos that, uh, you know, are in line with doing more of that, the practice type piece and the here's how to, you know, stand here, stand there. Here's how to throw. Here's a grip, you yep. know, different types of, you know, barrels. Speaking of, you know, front weighted, middle weighted, back weighted, whether they're torpedo shaped or, or so forth. How is that coming? Is that something I, I know you guys have talked about it, but where are you at in, in producing those? Yeah. So um, the biggest thing is just attention span and the reality, like the objective reality of how social media works. We started making shorts like last November. And since we started making shorts, meaning 90 seconds or less, which doesn't sound constructive if you're trying to learn a skill based sport, but it's simply what works and what people want to watch. So we've been pumping those out and have doubled our social media across all platforms just in three months. So it's insane to think we started our social media before I came along. So I think maybe the A to Z one was created in like 2014 and it took um, essentially 10 years to develop a following of like 30,000 people on Facebook and like that's now doubled in four months. So it's quite significant. Anyone out there that's content marketing, I couldn't recommend more to make shorts. And of course you have your long form version that would go on YouTube and just break that into segments. So we have already put out um, a few, like Will in particular has helped me with the practice routines. I think I've only done one. And uh, form and mechanics, I'm probably touching last just because it's the most difficult to give a one size fits all solution to people. But yeah, I think that you can already go and look at our playlists on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, wherever. It's the same handle always, AZ Darts and USA Darts. Um, you're going to find content already right now. And we decided that there's not going to be one particular order that we go in. For example, I'm not going to do exhaust all practice routines, then I'm going to finally talk about form. It's going to be a healthy mixture of everything and kind of random. So that's the only way we can realistically get content out and also just kind of be able to keep up with the demands of our daily responsibilities. Okay. So, and I, and I know I need to do shorts. Like I need to cut this <laughs> stuff up and, and do shorts and I'll be honest, I don't have time for it. And um, someday, someday we'll get to, well, by the time I start doing that, it'll no longer be a thing. It'll, <laughs> no, it'll still be a thing. Don't worry. You know, it'll be, you know, it'll be like three seconds or whatever at that point yeah. in time. It's, it's all based on attention span, but i um, excited to hear that you guys have some stuff. So those that are watching this, if you want to learn a little bit more or just get a little bit better, because I know there's some good players that are watching this, but if you want to get a little bit better, as we all know, you can always learn a thing or two. You can always get better. There's not one darts player ever 
even Phil Taylor, that never worked on getting better. You always have to be working to improve because the people that are 16, now 17, <laughs> yeah. are working harder than you and progressing. <laughs> um, speaking of which, if anybody wondered, there was a tournament that ended today. Go figure out who won, who won. go to the PDC, because I'm not going to spoil that one for you, but it was a nice tournament. It was a lot of fun. So, Jen, real quick, we are going to take a quick commercial break. And in doing so, coming back from that commercial break, I want to uh, start talking about a product that A to Z Darts uh, offers. It is the Colonial Dartboard V2, which I happen to have the boxes right there. And I happen to have one with me. And I just want to talk a little bit about that particular product. So you guys stay tuned. And uh, we'll be talking about that on the other side of this commercial break. So you want to get into darts, but you're not sure how. We can definitely help with that. We're a to Z darts.com and we've been a dart specialty store for over 30 years. We have the greatest variety of darts in the country. But don't worry, we can narrow down that selection for you. Whether you're a complete beginner or a full-on expert. We developed our own Colonial brand to offer an inexpensive line of darts, dartboards, and accessories. So you can get into the game without breaking the bank. Join our amazing community by going to azdarts.com. All right. I love that commercial. I, I've been playing it every week now. Um, it, I think it's just a fun one. I love I love the reactions and stuff. We need to do one with Will, though. We, I we, know. We need, we need to get his his little face in there. Well, so. if Will lived near me, I think it would be game over for the darts world. Like we talk about all the time. We could film together. I think that's all we would do. But sadly, he loves to live in Kansas like a psycho. I, know. I, don't, I don't understand it, but he likes it. So he's there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I want to talk about this guy. So this is the Colonial. Sorry, guys. I need to buy a better camera so that I can do this stuff better. So I promise I was looking today. I'm going to buy one tonight or tomorrow. But this is the Colonial V2. Let me get it in there. You guys can see this guy. It is a really nice uh, board. It's got the uh, spider shot into it or the webbing shot into it. Um, it it's, it's just a really nice board. I've had this. Honestly, for three years now, I played with it a little when I still lived in California. I've had it up here in the office, kind of just dinking around with it. I've got to figure out my setup here. Um, but it has held up traveling from California to Tennessee. It's held up uh, the heat here in Tennessee. It's held up in the winter here in Tennessee. Um, Jen, tell us a little bit more about this board. It really is a nice board. Yeah, absolutely. So that is our in-house Colonial dartboard. Colonial's our in-house brand for darts and accessories. So it's official tournament size, if anyone's wondering. Um, it's got the sword edge wiring system, first grade Kenyan sizal, um, non-fade colors. I would say it's like your economy dartboard that is really, really worth um, investing into for home play. It's a really good practice board because it's going to handle a lot of abuse. Um, a little touch softer than your average board out there. So it's really going to, the, the sizal is going to heal relatively well. It'll show your aesthetic wear and tear, but it's very solid for a decent home board for the price. Um, I believe they're retailing $65.95 right now. So if you're like a tournament organizer and you want the best of the best, you know, of course, we would not expect the Colonial to be in there for your top professional play. But it is an amazing option for like bar owners or people that are just practicing at home. I think my favorite thing about it is the colors are very like traditional red and green because, you know, sometimes the red can be like a little orange, a little salmon or coral. But it's just very like it's the, it's exactly the colors that I expect to see when I throw on a dartboard. Yeah, it's very Christmassy. I really mm -hmm. like it. Um, it is the traditional green and red and they're vibrant. The red is really, really, truly vibrant. Um, and then the, the metal, the spider, I'm trying to think of what this, the blade that shot in here is really in here nicely. It's really well done. It's very thin. So you're not going to get too many bounce outs because of that. It's not the round wiring that's stapled in. So this is really nice. Uh, the bullseye is really a clean Really nice, clean bullseye. Uh, I don't know if you can see any, like where I have, well, let's not do the 20. Let's do the one and the <laughs> five because, you know, that's where I'm hitting it most of the time. <laughs> but it does heal really, really well. Um, had a lot of fun with this board. It's, you know, again, it's held up. It's held up under different temperatures, which is a which is a thing for dartboards. Um, you will find that certain dartboards, depending on how they're packed, the sizal, um, will puff out in extreme heat and moisture 
Um, and sometimes they'll indent. If you, you've seen that, that happens a lot with dry weather. Um, so this board really does seem to hang up, hold up at 65 bucks. It's a good price. It's a great practice board for sure. Um, it's a great home board um, for, it's a home board. Um, I don't know. There's like a commercial there. Um, <laughs> but even for the bar scene, I could see this in, in, in tournament play. I don't see why it couldn't be used. I don't know. It would just depend on how many times you want to switch out a board during tournament. I think if it was being played a lot, it might start to wear a little bit. But uh, again, it's a really nice board. It's from Colonial, which is an A to Z branded product. So it's only available through A to Z. Uh, but I recommend that particular board. Unless, you know, it's, it's better than spending $130 on a blade. Um, you know, you're going to get two of these boards out of that blade. And I think it lasts just as long, in my opinion. And it's not orange and green. It's red and green. So it's got that more traditional look. If it's got that matters feel. to you. <laughs> it, it should matter to you. <laughs> okay. So um, that starts, man. You know, that's it's unless true. It's We're blue. Picky. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's Christmas colors. It's supposed to be that way. So how long have you guys been carrying that board now? Ooh, a while now. I would say, huh. I think the V2 came out several years ago. Oh gosh, I couldn't pinpoint the exact moment, but Colonial was created in 2016. So I'd say maybe a few years after that. Yeah. Okay. Talk a little bit about the Colonial brand, because I know you guys are the ones, it's your brand. I don't think any other stores are carrying it. I think it's just something you guys have, or is there anybody else out there? Yes, yeah, so people can people absolutely do resell it. Um, okay. Our wholesale customers buy it. Sometimes they re they'll like uh, rebrand it to something else. So, yeah, it's um it's meant to be an economy line that has particular milling choices and coating choices that save you on cost. So our cost is as low as we can possibly make it for the design, for it to have some kind of a functional purpose towards your your throw. So it's really targeting people that just simply don't want to spend a lot of money on their darts to get into the sport. Or it's targeting someone who's really trying to experiment with their throw. Like you mentioned earlier, if I've never thrown a front-loaded dart, a bomber dart, um, I certainly don't want to buy a $100 plus set to be able to experiment with that. Because sadly, you know, you can't tell based off pictures what a dart is going to be able to do for you or how it's going to feel in your hand. So you, you really, you should grab a set of your friend's darts as often as you can and throw them so you can learn. But a super cheap, inexpensive way to get quality tungsten. So the whole line is made up of 80%, 90% tungsten. It doesn't have fancy coats and coloring. You're usually lacking the axial grooves, which you know requires a, a better CNC machine. It's just a more expensive milling process, more time on the machine. So we've kind of just pinpointed down from a design perspective and the functional side of how to make something that's just affordable. So really that's that's colonial in a heart, in a nutshell. All right. I mean, I've played the barrels. I like the barrels. Um, I know that you guys have had sponsored players. Do you, I don't, I honestly don't know this. So I'm asking a question. Are there any current sponsored players out there for colonial? Yes. So we have uh, Cali West V2s, Mark McFadden V2s out in New York. And we, we do make barrels for Dax Mana who provides our blogs. For those of you unfamiliar, that's a resource that you're going to want to take advantage of. Go to our blog for that super in-depth 3000 plus word, you know, uh, how, how to grip a dart, uh, dartitis, you know, just how to gain a competitive advantage, a competitive edge. These are really big topics that Dax tries to tackle. Um, so we have barrels for him. And, you know, super spoiler, Will and I are making our own darts. We're just not going to name them after ourselves because who cares about us? And they're going to have a generic name and come out, you know, as something to represent USA darts under the colonial line. So there'll be two different versions called Alpha and Omega. And uh, that should be finish with manufacturing very soon. So uh, I'm excited because I, I had a prototype myself that I used to throw that I just never turned into a dart when I was sponsored. Um, so I get to kind of bring that back into the market. Um, it's got that famous scallop grip, which is very popular. And Wills is very particular to how he likes his barrel, which offers like kind of a straight long option, which is universally loved. So I think there are two really good options coming soon that people are going to like a lot. Well, that's exciting. I do remember when you had your barrel. That was when you were sponsored by Shot. And, and Correct. I think I still have a set floating around my house somewhere. So um, those are 
classic items for sure. Mine's signed. So, <laughs> um, but, um, well, that's, that's, that's really cool. I'm glad that you guys are coming out with a barrel because you should have one. Will should have one. And if you haven't seen or heard Dax ever talk about darts, hang on. Cause I'm going to suck him back into the show, but he has done a couple episodes in the past and he is very knowledgeable, uh, of the throw, your stance, understanding, dominant eye versus weak eye and, and how to play off of that. He's, he's just really a great, a ball of knowledge when it comes to darts and playing darts and, and just the other aspects, the mental aspects of the game. So we will suck him into the show and get him to start, um, you know, giving us some information at some point. Uh, but Dax is a great uh, person to know if you don't know him and uh, just, Check him out on Facebook. If you got a darts question, he will answer it. So I uh, highly recommend that. Um, I haven't gotten into too many comments tonight. There have been some that have been coming out. Um, I need to figure out how to do a scroller on this program that I use. Just have never figured it out. But there was one person that said, Jen, will you marry me? Ooh, Sorry. Unfortunately, I'm spoken for. Um, yeah, but maybe um, in an alternate universe. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I promised Porky long ago that we were the untold love story of a straight couple that never was. Um, but no, I, I sadly, I'm spoken for. I've been married. My sixth year anniversary is coming up uh, this nice. year. Congratulations. Yeah, I think Jen's got a long list of potential suitors for her. Um, it's 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 long and distinguished. So uh, <laughs> I would just I just it's add your name to that list. It is not distinguished. Let me just clarify. <laughs> I don't know. I know some of them. So um, I think it is distinguished. But um, speaking of of those that would want to marry you, um, let's get into some of the, the lady starts, because I know there's a couple of the ladies out there that have none of them. promised to. It's all dudes. Absolutely it's all none dudes. of them. It's I'm all dudes. heartbroken over it. Uh, all right. I do want to get into speaking about ladies darts and women's darts, because if you did not know, last week, so not this Easter weekend, but the previous weekend, the ladies darts started for the PDC. Uh, we had four tournaments with Fallon Chirac actually winning two of them. Um, she, she, she's showing her dominance again, playing extremely well. Um, I just want to go into a little depth of what it was like when you started playing darts. Cause I know we've talked about it before and I know you talk about it. If, if anybody wants to go to Jen Mounts on YouTube and just go to some of her older videos, she talks a little bit about what it was like, but could you, you know, and I, I know that some of it wasn't the greatest experience, but maybe just kind of go back and, and just talk about what it was like coming into darts as a female and playing in the female you know, females, how the ladies, you know, how those brackets went, how the, how the tournaments went for the ladies and, you know, maybe we'll bring it into today. Sure. Um, I think it's, it's tough because depending on whether you were born into soft tip or born into steel tip, your experience might be quite different. I think to sum it up in hindsight now, 10 years later, when, when you're a soft tip player in a local town, I, I feel as if when I was playing, there wasn't any reason to be good as, as a female. There, there wasn't any reason to aspire to get your rating up. Everything was handicapped and flighted out with soft tip, so rating was a big deal. Um, what I found within like a year of playing is my rating got so high to where I could no longer play in women's events because my rating alone was higher than like two women's combined, so it just like they wouldn't raise the cap. Well, I, would, I didn't even ask them to raise the cap, but, you know, that those rules are kind of set in place because of the, the local um, standard of play. And a lot of times, you know, being at that kind of like higher rating, which I was, certainly was never the best, but it was better than average. And getting paired with guys in blind draws, you know, finding partners to play in AA events, elite events you know, just the top divisions was always a little awkward. Even if my rating was higher, um, male partner would want to go first and to cork uh, or diddle mm -hmm. for the middle. And I always fancied myself a great bullseye shot. That's my favorite segment on the board. So I think that was a particularly hard experience for me. I, I wanted to cork and go first. So it's it was just never really all that smooth um, of an experience. And Playing in women's events, I think that it just wasn't fun, you know, for the rest of the competition. I'm dishing out pretty significant handicaps. So a unique experience to have to play, giving out like two marks on 15, three on 16 to close. And then the rest of the points that aren't accounted for just uh, rack up as points. So they'd be starting with like 120 points in a game of cricket. 
it was um, just kind of difficult. Uh, instead of trying to pay, play people just much better than me all the time, I think in my head, I wanted to be with like the women's community and to play with other women. And that was probably a mistake starting out from the beginning. Um, after that, getting into the professional side of traveling and competing, you know, serious competition, money's on the line. You kind of notice right away, there's just a set number of women that have kind of been like, let's say steel tip side ADO ranking, people chasing points, top 10 have been very similar for like 10 years. You know, you've got like, Callie West, Paula Murphy, um, Marlies Keel, et cetera. There's, there's so many players to name. I think Andrea Taylor might be one that wasn't really on my radar, who is very high ranked now. Um, but the, the point being, everyone's kind of already paired up. Like the women just have their partners. So for me coming in, I, I never had the same pairs partner. I had to find different partners for every single event I played in. So I think that was kind of a discouraging thing of, there wasn't anyone with me at my time getting into the sport and trying to like get their skill up really fast for the women's side. So I'd like to imagine nowadays I've noticed like quintuple the amount of new people, new ladies coming in at this time who are like significant on my radar that I'm sad I didn't get to play against them, you know, five years ago. Um, so it's definitely exciting to see opportunity change, prize money change, um, social kind of community has changed a little bit, how they treat women in darts. I think it's all positive things have been happening worldwide. Yeah, I think when, you know, when the PDC kind of, I think their hand was forced, let's be honest. I think they had stayed away from the ladies game for quite a while until uh, it, their hand was forced and they, they had no other option but to to do something, which was actually a, a huge benefit, I think, to, to ladies darts. Um, once ladies were added in, you know, they were part of the championship. Um, and then we had, of course, Fallon who broke through and not just that year that she played and, and not just beat one particular guy, you know, beating a, a world champion and then just really driving home. And then the remaining years, the last three, four years that it's been, um, just what she's been able to do on the Aki has really opened up the doors um, I think in, in some regards, there, there, there of course are definitely ladies at, uh, before her. Dita had had beaten a gentleman prior to that. It just wasn't in the same format. It wasn't in the same, you know, televised type of option. So Dita, if anybody wanted to know, she was the first one to ever, ever beat a male in a tournament setting. Um, that was back in the 80s, I believe. Um, so, but like I, for me looking at it, I'm excited to see where things are going. Um, I've always said that this is the one sport where things are kind of equalized. Uh, we just need to get it, get it there. And we, we've seen that starting to happen. How do you feel about where things have come in the last couple of years where we're seeing the PDC finally getting involved and, and helping really promote the ladies game? I will say disclaimer, I believe that as Americans speaking to an American audience, it's a lot more important to grow the American women's game than to look towards the European side for inspiration, uh, creating actual opportunities here and looking at prize pool here and looking at inspiring women to, like I was saying before, have a reason to be good at all, instead of being that really low skilled player that's like filling a trips bracket or whatever. Um, but that aside, absolutely, it's inspirational to see Bo Greaves in particular come out, not even 21 yet, crushing it. I mean, to the point where it's just so undeniable she would beat the average guy out there. Um, yeah, Fallon, Dita, Lisa Ashton, Miku Suzuki, it, there, there are too many names to name. It's, I think when I first started, the only two players that were significant that I would hear people talking about was Trina Gulliver, Anastasia, and Stacey Bromberg in the States. And then I had to deep dive and obsess over finding out who all, you know, were the greats like in Amer American and Canadian history or even overseas. But now where, where I feel that it's changed the most is the media kind of surrounding women's starts. There's a reason to talk about women's starts because there are events and they're being televised and live streamed. So to me, of course, I'm gonna be a little biased in that. I feel really proud of what Will's doing with USA Darts in giving a platform for American women to play on stream 
from top 16 matches and up, not just the finale, not just the finals matches. And we're seeing that new blood come in and that's why they're on my radar. I wouldn't have known otherwise that there are Lisa Tyler's out there and Olivia Terry's and new people coming in that I didn't know about um, who are excellent and entertaining and just good people. So it, that's really important if getting women used to being on camera. And I think a lot of um, your legacy players are really uncomfortable with that and having the attention and they've been so used to being just kind of forgotten about uh, that it's been a hard change for them. It's a really positive step forward to make your sponsorship worthwhile, to give a reason to be marketable, for people to know of you, to sell merchandise. These things are really important. Um, and we're seeing women's events in particular happening in the United States, like Tournament of Champions. If you're a good woman anywhere, drive two hours a week. I don't, I don't care every week to qualify for the CSI, the, the women's elite finale. You can win thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, this is significant now. Women of all skill levels can win money now, with, with particularly with soft events. And they certainly have great established opportunities with steel chip that have kind of always been around. Um, it's a little tougher, I think, on the steel tip side. At least that's what I found. <laughs> I was horrible at steel tip. Um, fun fact, you have to practice checkouts and you have to practice your math and your steel tip game to be good at it. Instead of just being like great at soft tip and thinking like, oh yeah, that's just gonna like translate over. Um, but yeah, I, I think genuinely it's just a, you have to synergistically work on media, actual opportunity and prize money associated with that. And then how we get like excited about women and how we treat them so that they stay in our sport. Cause the, I would say you have like your legacy people that have been around for like 10 plus years, but the average, I would say career of a darts player is anywhere from like two to three years and then they're gone. They'll take a long hiatus. Maybe they come back, but then they're gone. And we see our customer, um, life, you know, a customer lifespan is like two to three years. So it's a little shocking when you kind of look at the data and realize it's really important not only to get people excited about darts, but how do you get them to stay? You know, it's everything matters year after year and you have to be evolving and changing. So I'm, I'm stoked for the ladies nowadays. I think, I think darts as a whole is on the rise. Hinting at what I was saying before, you have to grow everything separately. Like you have to grow women's darts in particular, and you have to grow soft tip and steel tips separately. So they all affect each other a little bit, but um, taking a particular look at like the PDC and where we came from the original BDO uh, World Championship in 2001, I think they, they only televised the finale. <laughs> they just like did not think that anyone would care about anything outside of that. But this is absolutely not true today. Spectators want to see women play. They want to see top 16 and above matches. And it it's just like, it's equally as exciting as, as a lot of men's matches. And we're hoping to see the world change for, to open and women's. Like, I think in some places you still see men's events labeled that way. So that is a little silly. Um, we, we certainly need to work on more women attempting to get, uh, you know, a card like Lisa Ashton and more women playing in open events would, would be exciting. We're already seeing it happening like in spades. So it, it can't go anywhere but up from here. Yeah, I mean, I would absolutely agree that, that we're on an upward trajectory um, with women's darts. Um, I would love to see like champ darts, you know, the CDC incorporate that. And I know those guys over there have talked about incorporating, um, you know, ladies darts. It, 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 there's a process. There's making sure that there's enough ladies that want to play. So if you are interested um, in that, and I know there's a lot of ladies that are playing the bar um, club scenes and the, you know, doing the league and doing that, but taking it to that next step. If you have any interest, you know, you've got to kind of ring that bell and I think what they need now, Fallon's been great for the sport just because she's she's young, she's cute, she's got a great personality. And I think that's the thing is we need to see some of the ladies be more, you know, Bo's definitely like she's intimidating and she's got this like she I'm trying to think of who she might remind me of. But she she's definitely got this personality that that's there, even though she's very quiet, there's definitely a personality there. So I think we need some of that within the ladies darts as well. Um, a little bit more personality, but I would love to see ladies darts creep up. And I, and 
as much as I say it's it, it's an equalizer, the sport is an equalizer. Um, I've been beaten many times, and every guy will tell you they've been beaten many times by ladies. It's an equalizing sport. I still would like to see it kept separate, just from the personality perspective. Um, and that you know, I just think that that's that's a good way for the sport to grow in itself. Um, I think have open tournaments where we've got them all mashed together, and then continue to have you know the men and the ladies just for the personality aspect. That's my personal opinion. Um, but I am excited to see where we go. If you haven't been watching, go check it out when they're playing on, for the PDC. Go watch some of that. It is an exciting sport. It's exciting to watch the ladies play um, and, and see what they're doing. They're just as good, if not better in some cases, than some of the guys. Um, and it's and the personalities are fun to watch. So what's up with USA Darts and the ladies? Where do we see that going? I know that you guys are doing streaming some matches, but do we see more of that happening this year and into next year? Well, the, the sad reality is, you know, we don't quite have control over that in terms of uh, organizer hires Will and the company to live stream their event. They are 100% responsible for assigning the boards to the stream board. Um, not to say that we can't have a conversation with them ahead or after the event and try to influence that, but at the end of the day, it is their prerogative to, to make that decision, and it would be unprofessional of us to steamroll um, their choices or tell them otherwise. But we certainly, it's been an ever-developing conversation of what is fair, what is best for the sport, what is best for spectators, what is best for the local crowd watching. The harsh reality, the objective reality is that the local Spectatorship is nowhere near significant to the worldwide perspective of who's like watching our streams now. So it's really developed to where they want to see nothing but top talent play. They want to see women. Not to say they don't want to see all levels sometimes, but definitely not as um, I would say equal as, as you would think would be fair. I, I'm actually looking back on Las Vegas Open that just passed in January because of the um, the gold event, silver event, you had huge names overseas present there. It was one of the most exciting things that we got to be a part of. And I think that was the first event that USA Darts streamed equal men and women, the entire event. And that never happens. We're, we're nowhere close to that normally. Um, but the the WDF uh, finale, you know, those particular rank, rankings and then seeing like Fallon and Dita go at it in cricket, Oh my gosh, that was exciting. Like the switching on the European players was so difficult because you had no idea what their strategy was going to be. Uh, that was the most exciting watching. Like, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch it in the moment because we were working and running a booth. But going back and looking at it, I think that was kind of a huge shock to me. I'm like, wow, women's events were played equally or sorry, streamed equally to the men's events. I think typically it might be anywhere from like 10 to 25 percent of the time. So as long as the players show up and the talents there, then yeah, we have every reason to showcase women. Yeah. And I, I think that's, that's part of it is we need to grow the younger game. We've always talked about growing darts as a whole, but I think we need to grow the lady side of the game. And, and part of that is introducing the money. Whenever there's money involved, you're going to see a growth within that sport or in that particular area of the sport. Um, we've seen that in other sports. Whenever the money comes in, of course, people go, oh, there's money. You know, my daughter all of a sudden can play darts that, you know, she's never picked up one. And now she's, you know, going to be the best darts player ever because she can become a millionaire and take care of me. <laughs> Who would ever say that? I um, don't know about you know. that. <laughs> I wouldn't promote that to our young generation of women, but you do you, Matt. This is your show. Hey, hey I've got a daughter. She needs to take care of me. Come on. <laughs> okay. um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking darts, you know, for sure. So, but again, I think that, you know, we need to, as a community, continue to push, continue to help along all of it as a whole, uh, bring a, bring up the, the soft tip and, and what that game has availability to do, uh, especially in schools and kids. And, and I'm excited that there are s s talk of schools bringing it up. Um, and some of the private schools in our area have talked about using it for math. Um, so I'm pushing that because my kids love it. And so we're trying to use that, but, um, I don't want to take up all your evening. I know that you, um, 
you know, need to get home because it's like almost six o'clock for you. You want to get home and do your thing. But I also know that uh, USA Darts uh, has an event coming up here in about 10 minutes. That's and right. so I want to let, let you get off to, to do that. If you guys didn't know, if you want to go over to USA Darts after this, um, either on Facebook or on YouTube, um, Jules with his broken left hand is still going to be playing tonight. And I believe he's playing Steve Hilger. Um, and that's at eight o'clock central time. So nine o'clock Eastern. What is that? Western six o'clock. Six o'clock. Um, yeah. So if you guys want to watch that, Jules will be, I think he has a cast on his left hand, <clears throat> but he'll still be throwing. So if anybody saw that, uh, but I think you guys should check that out. Um, Jen, thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate you doing this. Uh, it's been a while. Definitely. We'll have you back as things continue to progress within the sport and as things come up uh, again really appreciate you thank you so much for being here and guys don't forget to check this out tonight again eight o'clock here so in about 10 minutes uh, seven minutes sponsored by a to z darts and brought to you by partners promoting darts and usa darts go check that out at uh usa darts either on facebook or on the youtube Jen, again, just want to say thanks, everybody. Enjoy your evening. And Jen, I'll talk to you later. Everybody else, have a wonderful evening. and Go over and check that out. See you guys. Thanks for having me. All right. So 